from finally revealing the stranger's true identity to Tom Bombadil making his long-awaited debut, these are the Rings of Power Season 2 spoilers fans need to know. We spent most of the first season wondering who the stranger really was, and something tells me we'll finally find out if he's Gandalf. Sure, there's plenty of evidence that he's the Grey and eventually White Wizard, but we never really hear his name, do we? At first, it seemed like he was actually Sauron, but that turned out to be a red herring, cause, spoiler alert, Halbrand was the Dark Lord all along. Now, by the end of the first season, the stranger shows a lot of powers that were ripped straight out of Gandalf's playbook. Turning into a swarm of moths is a big sign, as is the use of his staff. He even tells Nori to follow her nose, which is word for word something Gandalf said in Lord of the Rings, but I'm still not convinced. For starters, Daniel Wayman's character is still called The Stranger in Season 2. I'm willing to bet we'll hear Gandalf's name spoken for the first time in the sophomore season, but what if the writers are just tricking us again? You have to admit, The Stranger was the perfect diversion. I was so busy focusing on him that I never guessed who Halbrand really was. Could we get a repeat of that in Season 2? Maybe, maybe not, but we definitely need to find out where he and Nori are going. They were setting off on a long journey at the end of the first season. All we know is they're heading east of the run, so their adventures will be a core part of the sophomore season storyline. Now there's another major loose end we need tied up. How did Halbrand get all those other rings made? The first three rings came into being in season one, but he needs to make another 17 before he's done. How's he gonna trick Celebrimbor again? Won't the elf be wary of more manipulation? In the books, Tolkien talks about how Sauron took an alternate identity to trick the elves. Calling himself Anatar, the Dark Lord claimed to be a servant of the Valar to gain entry into a region. We've yet to see this disguise on the show, but if they're sticking to the source material, it'll probably come up in Season 2. Also, according to Tolkien, Elrond and Galadriel were suspicious of the disguise from the start. They both felt that Anatar wasn't being honest, but on the show, they already found out who he was in the first season. Elrond learned his identity when he checked those old scrolls, and as for Galadriel, the poor elf got tricked by Halbrand. She only learned about his deception when it was too late. The rings had already been crafted, and she hasn't even told anyone about Halbrand's terrible secret, apart from Elrond, of course. She'll have to come clean sooner or later. But to be fair, she'll look kinda dumb once she tells everyone. Like, she blindly followed what Finrod told her in that vision, even though it was just Dark Lord pulling her strings. She's gonna stop at nothing to hold Sauron back, and she'll need all the help she can get, which is where her friend Elrond might come into play. The two elves will need to get together and swap some notes, so they'll probably get more screen time together in the second season. We got a glimpse of their interconnected plot in the season finale, when Elrond admits he should have just trusted Galadriel, but he has a whole new season to make it up to her. Now that Silly Breembers made those rings, someone's gonna have to wear them. All three of them are pretty relevant, but I'm most interested in Neria for now. In case you don't know, that's the ring that Gandalf wears in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, and it allows him to control fire. The thing is, Gandalf wasn't always Narya's bearer. A character named Surdin the Shipwright had it for thousands of years, and he only gave it to the Grey Wizard in the Third Age. As it so happens, Surdin will be a major character in the second season, so let me give you some backstory for the ancient elf. Back in the First Age, Surdin was the Lord of the Falathrim, or in other words, the elves that settled on the western shores of Middle-earth. But he had a new gig by the Second Age, which is when the Rings of Power is set. Remember when Frodo heads off to the Grey Havens at the end of the trilogy? Surdin and Gil-galad built them after the war against Morgoth, and the Lord of the Falathrim became the master of these secluded lands. We've seen Gil-galad played by Benjamin Walker in the first season, so I can't wait to see him and Surdin together in the follow-up. Now there's more to Surdin than his history with Narya. He was also one of the few elves to see through Anatar's ruse. Despite that, he accepted Narya when it was offered to him, although he soon found out what a mistake that was when Sauron invaded. In his defense, the elves tried to dilute Sauron's power with their three rings, and they had no idea he'd use it to control them with the one ring. Now, Rings of Power has made some changes to the source material, so Sirdan's story might be kinda different, but he might be the bearer of one of the three rings for a while. Not to mention, Sirdan fought in the War of the Ring, and he had to watch his friend Gil-galad die in battle. 
That's all gonna come much later though, cause for the second season, the writers will introduce his dynamic with Gil-galad, and probably show him getting Narya for the first time. This still leaves the other rings to consider, which means the ring wraiths could finally get a backstory. I can't forget that moment when Frodo and the other hobbits are hiding from the wraith. It was one of the most terrifying scenes of the original trilogy, cause it showed the twisted effect these creatures could have on the world. Now we know that they're humans corrupted by the power of the rings, but apart from that, we don't have many details about their past. You probably know about their leader, the Witch King of Angmar. He was a Numenorian named Cayman, but he's not the only ringwraith whose name we know. This is some deep Tolkien lore, so listen up. One of the ringwraiths used to be called Kamul the Easterling, and he ruled over the land of Rune. Yup, the Stranger and Nori are heading into his territory in the upcoming season. But if they cross paths with Kamul, he'll still be a regular king. We might watch him get corrupted by the ring over the course of the season. Halbrand could head east to convince Kamul to fall to the dark side, and Nori and her mysterious friend might be the voice of reason. Even though there's no way to confirm this right now, the fact that the Stranger and Eleanor are set for Ron can't be a coincidence. There's another six wraiths unaccounted for, but I doubt we'll get more than two or three next season, cause a crowded cast list makes for confusing storytelling. Even so, there's at least one character fans are hoping to see, whether or not anyone else gets a shout out. You see, Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy left out one of Tolkien's most mysterious creations. I'm talking about Tom Bombadil, and he might make his on-screen debut in season two. Look. This is just a theory at this point, or maybe you can call it wishful thinking, but Tom Bombadil has to show up on the Rings of Power. I get why Peter Jackson cut him out of his film trilogy, cause they were already over three hours each. But with eight hours of content to deliver, Rings of Power doesn't have that problem. It won't be his Lord of the Rings storyline for sure, cause all that happened in the Third Age. But the writers might show us what he was up to in the Second Age. It's not like there's any shortage of stories there. I mean, Tom's probably the oldest character in Tolkien's Legendarium. Elrond clearly knows who he is in the books, and in Season 2, we can find out how he knows. I'm not expecting the showrunners to reveal too much about Bombadil, cause Tolkien intentionally left his backstory unexplained. The mystery's what makes this character so popular among the fans, so unless they want to start a riot, the writers will probably steer clear of too much exposition. If he does show up, I'm assuming it'll be a tribute to his support of the Hobbits as they left the Shire. Maybe his resistance to the ring will get a mention too. Either way, from Tom Bombadil potentially making his on-screen debut, to finally revealing the stranger's identity, these were the Rings of Power Season 2 spoilers fans need to know.